Today we're going to restore a Apple product, victim of the 90s capacitor plague, a Newton message pad, the original Newton message pad, model H1000. These guys tend to stop working after a few years. I've seen forum posts dating back at least 15 years from even now, back in uh, mid-2000s that uh, they're having issues with sound or whatever. They're still kind of working, but now um, people are saying they don't work at all. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, um, I, I looked at one of these a couple years ago and fixed it, no problem. And it was like a big hit in the community, the Newton community, like, oh my God, nobody thought to replace the capacitors. Let's see what happens when I power it up. Get power, nothing, slide the switch. Nothing. Usually there's a little video glitch. There we go, yeah. So you can see there's something here it's trying to display. It will respond to input, but there's no sound. Oh, see it's trying to boot. But the video is all screwed up. It's not happy. This is a very easy fix. Two parts need replaced, three if you are anal. But uh, let's get started. Let's remove your accessories, like the stylus, any memory cards you unlock, eject, take out any batteries, remove the cover, put the switch to main batteries. This one has a NICAD, NICAD pack in it. It's uh, starting to uh, leak a little bit. Inside's fairly clean. There's evidence of a uh, electrolyte leakage here, but it's usually not a problem that I've seen. Let's also take out the uh, main battery. If you can't move the switch, this is the battery pack detector, and it'll allow you to move the switch over to backup battery. Let's pull that out too. Let me taste this. Oh, that's a good battery. That one's good. And let's disassemble. You'll need a, a PH0, Phillips 0 screwdriver, and either a sharp razor blade, hobby knife, or a very pointy needle. There are three, I think, seven screws. I think five, six, eight screws. Two on the edge are very long. Three in the upper compa battery compartment are medium sized. Two in the lower battery compartment are small. And there's one more hidden away at the top by the ejection knob under a sticker to hide it from view. So get a knife or something and just get in there on the edge. Try not to maul the sticker. There we go. That popped out. There it is. Let's put that aside. And the razor is done for today. You can unscrew this guy. Very tiny. Put that aside. And there are clips here, here, and several places here, but the easiest way to start is over here on the uh, power switch side. Go underneath the power switch right about here, pry up, get the uh, get it wedged up and under, and pry up, and up here again, in the middle, under, and up. There it is. And that one's already good. This side is good. And just wiggle this out. In this way, and then set the back plate aside. So you can see there's a clip here, and a clip here, and not too much. There's one here and down there, but those came off by themselves after doing this side. So it's easier to start here, just below power switch, just below the eject switch. First glance, we see one electrolyte capacitor, and it's this guy. Um, in my experience, this has never been a problem. It always tests good when I pull it out. It has never leaked, and um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but we'll get back to that later. There's one more on here, but it's in disguise. You'd think 
um, capacitors like this, 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 those ones are look like they're okay because they're tantalums, which are usually the ones you want to replace with. And they're like the uh, tan colored ceramics, which are never a problem. This guy looks like a tantalum too, but it's not. This is uh, a through hole one style like this inside of a um, plastic shield, making it disguised. So let's move these two wires out of the way. Those are to the speaker. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, this is held down by a little bit of solder at the top and then solder down over here. So first I'm gonna get a little ball of solder on my iron tip here. This will help with heat conduction. Hold it to the very top while prying up on the capacitor. That was very easy. Spin this up all the way. And I can touch the legs of the capacitor while pushing it this way. I'll touch the leg closest to me and push the capacitor away gently and that comes up. Then I'll do the opposite, touch the other leg and pull towards me. There, now it just popped off. It stinks a little bit. You can see a uh, little haze of electrolyte there. There's a little pool of it. And the board looks okay here, so it's not too bad. But let's clean it anyway. Let's get the initial swabbing up of the leaked electrolyte. You can see there is some crap there you don't want. And then alcohol spritz. And just do a general cleaning of in and around nearby components because that electrolyte, the capacitor juice, is conductive and it will leach between the legs and connections of nearby components and cause signal crossing, shorting, whatnot. This one wasn't too bad. That should be good enough. The alcohol is dry, the connection is clean, and the one we just popped off was a hundred UF at four volts. I have 100 UF at 16 volts, 100 microfarads, 16 volt through hole style, meaning it has the long wires which are meant to go through a circuit board to the other side. And markings on the board, plus is towards me, that means negative, or the black band or white band is towards the battery pack, and the capacitor was oriented top towards the bottom, so band towards battery pack this way. I'm going to bend the legs down at a 90 degree angle. Take some pliers, bend them back at the bottom at another 90 degree angle. So now we have a, an arrangement that will allow it to sit flush. Clip off the excess wire. <coughs> Spread the legs a little bit to match the pitch perfect of the old footprint and I like to pre-solder my components, tin them just to make them easier to reattach. So just double check the legs are to the top and the top is towards, the, no, let me rephrase that, the legs of the capacitor are towards the top of the Newton and the top of the capacitor is towards the bottom of the Newton with the band, the negative side, towards the battery pack. So I'm going to get this positioned, touch one leg, touch the other leg. There's already solder on them. That was not a good solder. There we go. Give them a little wiggle. Nothing's moving. That is secure. Now this is for the sound circuit. So this is the speaker wire coming in to an amplifier to the DAC. The amplifier needs a reservoir of um, immediate power, which is what this capacitor provides. And once it dries out, it can't get any ump to the speaker, so you hear nothing. So at this point, we should have sound. Let's see what happens. Let's plug it in. Power it up. Sound. It chimed. But still, the video is not there or messed up. You can hear it clicking. So, half of the problem is fixed. Sound issue resolved with this capacitor. Now the fun part is to remove a shit ton more screws. 
as with the back cover on the left side, the longer screws exist. There are three on this one. These are silver, three silver long screws along the left edge. Their positions were noted by a hollow arrow tip pointing to where they go, which makes reassembling slightly less painful because you might be tempted to put the screw in here, but that's for the back cover screw. It actually goes here where the arrow's pointing. So three long silver screws there, middle and bottom. Now there are a crap ton of little screws, little black screws. One is just near the capacitor we just replaced. There are two holding down this little metal plate, which is a pressure plate, getting pressure to the connection of the digitizer ribbon, which curls around right under here and then presses against the circuit board for its contact. It doesn't have a connector, just press fits. And that this bracket just ensures a an even amount of pressure across it. There's one up here by the ROMs, another one down here between the CPU and the ROM and the RAMs, another one here by the ejection switch, another down here by the power switch. And for those guys, that's it. These silver screws here, you don't need to worry about because those are just holding down the memory card socket, which is attached to the circuit board, and we don't need to worry about that. So you can see it's pretty loose here. Get these wires out of the way. Now it snags over here by a little clip. You need to push that out of the way, and you can lift. Oops. Let's pull that clip out, and you can lift the board out. Now that's free. And there's one more little trick. You can kind of tell when you start trying to pull it, the uh, battery terminals here are actually clipped down themselves. So I'm going to use a couple tools to do this just for the camera. But you can do this with your fingers alone. There's a clip here. You just push that back. And this terminals should lift up there. And same over here, little clip there. The terminals will lift up past that. That does not sound good, but it's fine. And then, if you have any issues, just be very gentle pulling up here, and you can free these by jimming them around. Now the battery terminals are free. And the board is free, for the most part. Now you can see it's sandwiching. This orange ribbon here is the display cable. You don't have to disconnect it. You can swing the board around the uh, metal shield there and lay it flat like a sandwich. <clears throat> so these contacts here are where the uh, digitizer press fits. That's the digitizer ribbon right here. And just as the other side, there's a capacitor in disguise here. It's actually an electrolytic going service mount style. This is a tantalum, don't worry about that. This guy, like I said, is not a problem, but we'll replace it anyway just for the people that are anal. This guy here is the infrared sender receiver, which has an interesting arrangement we'll get into later. So as with the other fake out, there's a little bit of solder at the top of the capacitor. Gotta melt that while pulling it up. Make sure you have some solder on your tip already for good heat conduction. I think I need more. Let's get more solder on there. There we go. So that cap comes up. Then, like before, touch one leg while pushing away from that leg. There we go. And touch the other leg and pull back. That comes right off. Whew, stinky fish. That is one leaky cap. You can see there's some gunk there. We'll clean that off. And then spritz it with alcohol. <clears throat> this one's kind of important because if any of that got into the contacts for the memory card reader, you may not be able to use your expansion cards. Just clean that crap off. Make sure the contacts of the memory card slot 
are good and clean. And this one <clears throat> was 3.3 .3 microfarads at 35 volts. I have 3.3 .3 at 50. Where'd it come out? Where'd it go? There it is. So markings on the board, positive is towards the memory slot and the capacitor was laying down towards the power switch. So that means the negative was to my left, positive is that way. I'm going to bend the legs again 90 degrees, get my pliers, bend them back, again with a nice lay flat mounting arrangement. Clip off the excess. Now the original capacitor that was down here was about four millimeters. And I size fit um, different capacitors for somebody else to make sure that the board could still close flush. If you had a larger capacitor, this one I have is fairly small. And it will accommodate up to five millimeters. So you can put a fat capacitor in there. There's a lot of room. So I'm gonna spread the legs to make sure I match the pitch, maybe a little bit more. And add little balls of solder, pretend my legs. Lay it down in position, then touch one side, touch the other side, give it a wiggle. It is perfectly fast. This Newton I would declare fixed at this point. Let's close it. I haven't done this one other capacitor yet, but just to show you, let's get this reasonably closed. And like I said, the uh, digitizer needs a press fit here, so I'm going to squeeze there while I apply power. Oh, there we go. So there, we have a picture. And it chimed. And I have to squeeze the digitizer connection just to see. There we go. Yep, it's recognizing. Perfect. So, I would say this one's good to go. But for, and we can start closing it at this point, but for the people who are anal about all the capacitors, we'll replace that one too. This one is a 470 microfarad at 10 volts. I have 470 at 10 volts. Let's put that out. And this one is pretty easy to remove, even though it is truly through hole because it is going through the board from one side to the other, bend it out. And I just hold my iron across both contacts on the other side to melt them at the same time. And it should just wiggle out there. Clear. And positive. Negative, so negative towards the outside, positive inside. Means black band or color band towards the outside. Clip off some excess. And these went straight in this way. And that bent down. It's a good fit. The solder looks okay on that side. Be cleaned up a little bit over here. There we go. So that has been replaced. And just to show you, here's an LCR meter. This is the one we just pulled out. Let's put this in position. So 470 is what we're expecting across this. Here. 492. It rates better and less than half, less than a quarter of a ohm series resistance, which is very good. So this essentially is a perfect capacitor. As I said, no need to do this one if you don't want to, but heck, there it is. Let's get everything back together here. Uh, make sure 
everything sits flat. The battery, battery terminals, they slide into little grooves. You've got to get in there just right and push them down and they snap into place. This guy, that clip, there we go. Get that in there. Sometimes this little window here might fall out. It only slides in one way, so don't worry about that. That's the IR um, window. So I told you before, this is the IR blaster. It's facing the front of the machine, but the uh, metal shield here has a bend here at the top that actually reflects it towards the top. So it's pointing this way and reflecting out the top. It's kind of neat, interesting design. I guess they couldn't make the uh, IR blaster compact enough pointing upward. So they had to do that arrangement. So back to reassembly. As before, the long screws along the edge. Might be tempted to put it there, but that's wrong. Go towards where the arrow is pointing. This one goes for the back case cover. So very top corner, top middle. And very bottom. All the little black screws and the pressure plate. The pressure plate was right there. I have two screws itself. And there was one done by the capacitor we placed the first time. These ones all have a note of a hollow arrow with a tail on it versus a hollow arrow with no tail for the large silver one. So here's a tall arrow with a tail. So one goes there, the very top. And there's one between the ROM and CPU here. Another one towards the eject switch there. And then last one by a power switch here. Back cover. Start at the top and snap everything together. Make sure there's nothing popping out. Good. So again, long ones on the edge. Semi-long ones, three of them on the upper battery compartment. Two small ones in the lower battery compartment. And lastly, a very tiny little guy at the top corner by the eject switch, which had a tiny little sticker hiding it so you don't see that obscene screw ruining your Newton Apple aesthetic. So originally this had a NICAT pack. I'm going to uh, tear this apart and rebuild that. I have the alternate version here, which is a user replaceable pack. Throw a couple of cells in there. And then the contact side goes towards the uh, edge, but I can't put it in until I'm in main battery replace mode, which I can't move the switch until the memory backup is in there. So memory backup, switch to main replace. That goes in, switch to the middle, which is normal operation, power. Power. Maybe I have to reset. There's a dirty battery pack. Well, let's do external power. I think the battery pack might be faulty still. So external power. Chime and screen. Perfect. Make sure the digitizer still works. Good. Good. 
Perfect. Cool. Auf. This is a German model. It won't know English. Delete. There you go. Beat up Martin. Hast? Hast was? Hast via N? Do we have what? Yeah. Okay, let's check out that battery issue real quick. I would consider this guy fixed, but let's see. This pack is very dirty. Usually you can get around that by rolling the batteries around to pick through any crust on the contacts. Let's do a good swab in there for good measure. And will it stay alive? It did, so the battery's good. Battery pack's good, cool. We have our working Newton. Sweet.